So bicep curls are the perfect example of an exercise that gets branded as being non-functional. You hear a lot of people saying, why do curls when you could be doing compound movements? The truth is though that there's nothing non-functional about curls at all. In fact, bicep curls can be really useful. Building big biceps is useful whether you're climbing, whether you're getting someone in a headlock, whether you're carrying something like shopping or a child. There's all sorts of reasons to train your biceps and isolating them with curls is a great way to stimulate growth. That said, they could be better, and if you want to not only grow your biceps faster, but also develop a more functional and powerful upper arm, then there are some slight tweaks and variations that you might want to consider. And as you might have guessed, we're gonna go over those here. Boom, my top's off. I thought what we'd do is we'd go over some of these better curls, some of these alternatives and variations, and as we do, we'd use that as an opportunity to talk a little bit about bicep anatomy and why this is a better way to train the arms. We're gonna start with circular curls, which is something that I've seen Pat McNamara do as well as a couple of other people. And basically it's gonna look like this. You grab your dumbbells and then you curl up the arms together, move into a wide position and then do the same. I've seen people do this with fat bells and that works really well but you can do it with dumbbells, as you can see, just perfectly fine. Essentially, drawing circles at the same time as curling. With that said, I would add a slight variation to this by curling upwards like so, but then stopping at the bottom and changing direction and now bringing them up apart and bringing them down together. So you're basically doing both directions, whether you wanna do five reps in one direction and five in another, or you just want to alternate, I just recommend you use both directions. The reason that the circular curl is useful is that it trains the inner and outer head of the bicep. So your bicep is actually made of two muscle heads. They have separate insertion and origin points and then a shared muscle belly, although there are no fibers shared between the two. And these work differently depending on the position of your arms. And when you maintain a more external shoulder rotation, then you'll be training the inner bicep head more. Likewise, when you have an internal rotation, you're working the outer head more. So by using a circular motion, be able to target both heads at the same time, thereby developing a more well-rounded looking bicep, resulting in a better peak and greater overall strength. That's why I also recommend that you switch directions because if you only go in one direction, then you're performing the eccentric with one position and the concentric with another position, and you're not doing both. However, if you switch direction, then this is gonna fix that problem. You'll be doing both eccentrically and concentrically. This also maintains a nice constant motion, which can help to pull blood in the area and really build a nice amount of pump. Next up are cross body hammer curls. So did you know that the biceps are not actually the strongest muscles in the upper arm? Rather that distinction goes to the brachialis, which is situated much deeper. And actually if you tense your arm here at the side and you have enough definition, it looks like a small bulge on the side of the arm here. So it's located a bit deeper, but it actually plays a bigger role in flexion of the elbow. In fact, it's 50% stronger in this range of motion. What it doesn't do, however, unlike the biceps, is play any role in supination or pronation of the wrist. So if you're maintaining a neutral grip, just like this, so this is supinated, this is pronated, and this is a neutral grip. And if you maintain this neutral grip, then you're removing that pronation and supination so you can just focus on training through that single range of motion, just the elbow flexion. Thereby, you're not gonna tire out the biceps as quickly and you can work the brachialis much harder. Not only does the brachialis make your arm look cooler and more well-defined from the side, but if you maintain a bicep peak, then it actually pushes the bicep heads up a little bit further, giving you a nicer height there. So aesthetically, there's lots of reasons to train the brachialis. And in terms of performance, while well, it's the strongest muscle in your arm, you do the maths. It's great for rope climbing and all kinds of other movements where you're maintaining a more neutral grip. With that being said, any exercise you do for your biceps, such as a curl, will also train your brachialis simply because it's the one that's working the hardest. This is just a great way to get a little bit extra performance out of it when your biceps might otherwise start lagging. Maintaining a neutral grip is also really nice for the wrist. If you have any wrist issues or elbow issues, then this can mitigate those, allowing you to perform more reps nonetheless, which is why I like to use it as part of a mechanical drop set. Do as many regular curls as you can, switch to cross-body hammer curls, and then go until failure. And you can even then switch to cheat hammer curls like this at the end. There you're using just a little bit of momentum to help yourself through the movement at the point where you no longer have the strength in the tank to continue 
performing curls regularly, so it acts as a kind of assisted rep. And if you're getting the momentum from your legs rather than your spine, then you're not putting yourself at risk of injury by doing that. Next up is one of my favorite moves that I've been doing forever, and this comes from Sylvester Stallone's book, Sly Moves. It's called the Dumbbell Runner, and essentially you're gonna be holding dumbbells and then slow motion running on the spot like Baywatch. And this is brilliant for all sorts of reasons, which I'll explain now. You're going to maintain a staggered stance position. You're gonna hold a dumbbell in each arm, lighter than you'd normally use. And on the one side, you're gonna do a hammer curl at the same time as bringing your arm up slightly with the shoulder. And on the other side, at the same time, you're gonna be forming a tricep kickback. Don't worry if you can't go completely horizontal to the ground, that doesn't really matter. And it's gonna look like this, so you switch over. Both the hammer curl and the dumbbell runner will also work the brachioradialis, which is this forearm muscle here, which also plays a role in elbow flexion, but only when the hand is semi-pronated, such as in a neutral grip. This can strengthen the forearm and, again, adds more cool detail. At the same time, what's really cool about the dumbbell runner is that you're training not only your biceps, but also your triceps and your shoulders. So in terms of aesthetics and definition, if you want a more full and impressive looking bicep, then you also need to train the shoulder and the tricep. First of all, the tricep is actually supposed to be two thirds of your upper arm compared to the one third that is made up by the biceps. So if you want bigger arms, then just doing loads and loads of curls is actually misguided. You want to be doing lots of tricep stuff as well. Of course, this is a video about curls. I'll talk about triceps in future maybe, but this is a great way to be training both at the same time. At the same time, if you want a better looking bicep, then you also need that additional definition that comes from having larger shoulders. And the great thing about this is, from a functional standpoint, that the biceps actually are biarticular. That means that they span more than one joint. They span the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. And they assist not only with stability of the shoulder during something like a curl, but also with shoulder flexion, helping you to raise it, such as when you're performing an uppercut or any other movement like that. The problem with performing only regular dumbbell curls is that you're only performing curls with your wrist in one position and your shoulders in one position, and this can lead to imbalances. And a great example of this is how performing only supinated curls means that you aren't training your wrist extensors to the same extent that you're training your wrist flexors, which can lead to problems like tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis. So, Essentially, when you perform a curl, you're also performing a isometric hold, an isometric contraction, as you prevent your wrist from bending that way. This involves the wrist flexors, which are responsible for flexing the wrist, of course. And these are, again, biarticular. They travel across the wrist and the elbow joint. So if you're performing only this movement, what you can end up doing is strengthening the wrist flexors more so than the wrist extensors, and you actually can end up feeling this in your elbow. So a great way to solve this problem is simply to flip the hand over into a more pronated position and then perform like that. And you can do this by rotating the wrists at the top or the bottom of the movement, like a supinating curl or a Zotman curl. However, I personally think it's best just to do both. Do some regular curls and do some pronated grip curls as well. You can do this with either a barbell or with dumbbells. So next up are ring pull-ups. And the great thing about rings is that you have to engage lots of stabilizing muscles in order to prevent them from wobbling all over the place whilst you're trying to pull yourself up. At the same time, when you perform ring pull-ups, you have the option of twisting the arms on the way up and moving them in a range of different positions. And this allows you to practice switching the grip, just as we've been talking about with the dumbbells. At the same time, by performing pull-ups or chin-ups of any sort, you're changing the strength curve. So pull-ups and chin-ups are great to combine with curls. Pull-ups or chin-ups with rings, even better. Another great option if you've got rings is to make them a little bit longer, lean back and perform a supinated bodyweight row. Again, changes the angle of resistance and it puts a nice deal of pressure on the bicep when it's fully stretched, making it a nice weighted stretch, which is fantastic for hypertrophy. In my recent video discussing resistance bands, I also talked about how you could achieve a similar thing using one of those. 
So the next exercise isn't strictly a curl, like, at all, but it's still a really cool exercise that will build bigger biceps and really fortify them against injury, as well as being a great precursor to a lot of cool calisthenics moves. So I'm talking about the pseudo planche push-up. The idea here is to perform a push-up, but with your hands turned backwards a bit further down your body, and at the top of the movement, you're going to completely straighten out your arms. What this does is it strengthens your straight arm strength. So because your arms are locked out and you're leaning forwards, a lot of pressure is going to go onto the anterior deltoids, but also the biceps and the biceps tendon. And by doing this, you strengthen those areas to make them able to better withstand great amounts of pressure. This is really important for gymnastic strength training if you want to perform moves like the iron cross or planche or anything like that. And at the same time, it can also help to prevent injury during movements like a deadlift. So it's a great exercise for generally strengthening and improving your performance. And as well, if you want to planche or do any of the planche variations or progressions, then this is one of the best places to start building up to that. And if you have rings, you can also try a similar thing, a rings turned out or RTO support hold. Basically, you hold yourself as high as you can with your arms fully locked out and wrists turned about 45 degrees outwards. This is again gonna send that pressure through the bicep and the biceps tendons, strengthening them so that they don't tear during a deadlift and giving you an even bigger and more impressive looking arm. I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That would help me out immensely. I massively appreciate all of your comments, likes, and shares. You guys have really helped me to get to where I am now, and it's humbling, honestly. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite biceps exercises are, what your favorite curl variations are, both for size and for function. And if you're interested in a workout that goes beyond just looking bigger and also focuses on function, whether that's increasing functional strength as well as mobility, even reaction speeds and focus, then you'll probably also enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. There's a link to that in the description down below, and there's a discount on right now during the pandemic. You can also find a link there to my print book, Functional Training and Beyond, which serves as an introduction to functional training and how it applies to the general population and athletes. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.